On my channel, I have covered several different Linux distributions. I've covered everything from advanced users all the way down to beginners. And when you get to the beginner or intermediate user, most people agree on the same thing, Ubuntu or Linux Mint. And most of the time, it's Linux Mint. But a lot of the complaints I get from people that use Linux Mint or have used Linux Mint in the past is, one, they love the operating system. It's easy to use. But two, what's really bothering them about it is the overall look of the operating system. Well, what if I told you there was an operating system out there that is just as user-friendly and less resource dependent as Linux Mint, but it is beautiful. That's what we're gonna cover today on eBuzz Central. Today's video is brought to you by the eBuzz Central store. No matter what kind of Linux you like, whether it be Arch, all the way to Ubuntu or Linux Mint, we have it. We have t-shirts, tank tops, we even have hoodies. We've got Debian-based hoodies, we've got Fedora-based hoodies. All I ask is you zip on over, check the store out. If you see something you like, go ahead and pick it up. And if there's something you would like to see on the store, please drop us a line. We'll do our best to get it up there for you. Linux Mint, we all agree it's a great distribution. We agree it's easy to use. And if you've been on Linux forever, or if you wanna come over to Linux from Windows or Mac, it makes things really easy for you. But it does have kind of a dated look. Some people will argue that, some people won't. But what we're looking at today is what I believe is a distribution that is easy to use as Linux Mint, but way more beautiful. It gives you more eye candy without sacrificing resources. And that is Farin OS. We're gonna look at the newest release of Farin OS, which came out April of 2022. And this is their website. I'll be sure to include that link in the description below. And when you come to their site, you've got home, get Farin OS, you've got news and help, and you have archived versions of the operating system if you want to look at a little older version of it. It basically lets you know it's designed around the user. It's got a whole world of applications. I love their store. We're getting ready to cover that. And then a couple of reviews down here from Linux Format and Linux Insider. So without any further to do, we're going to zip on over to the Farin OS desktop. And if you download Farron, throw it on a USB or open it up into a virtual machine, this is the desktop you're met with. Right off the bat, you can tell it's beautiful. The bottom panel has transparency in it, and you have a Welcome to Farron OS screen. Basically, it lets you take a little tour. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start the tour. And the first thing it wants to let you know is they did make some changes. Farron OS has detected that you're running in a virtual machine, and therefore a minor change has been made so that the settings will work with the virtual machine. And that main change is that it, XRender is being used as the default compositor. This is in order to reduce CPU usage. You can come down here as well and install VM tools for VMware or install guest editions for VirtualBox if you want to run this in a virtual situation as opposed to on hardware. So we'll go ahead and click Next. And then if you are coming from Windows, they give you a transfer tool so you can transfer your files for Microsoft Windows. You can go down here and open it. And if you click on how do I use the tool, it'll open up in the default browser, which is Vivaldi, and give you a little handbook on exactly how to use the transfer tool. This is great. It makes it easy and it gives it to you right at login. So when you're going through this and you're going through the welcome screen, you can zip on over here. It's got your requirements. It's got a video guide if you want to go watch that on YouTube. So this is something I tell you to definitely take a look at if you want to give this a test drive. So we're going to go back to the welcome screen and click next. And then you can start installing Farron OS if you want. You can install it right here or you can view the Farron OS user guide. You can get third party codecs right here. This is what some people say is the difference between Linux Mint and other Linux distros, because everybody knows if you're using Ubuntu, you have to get the restricted codecs, and Linux Mint generally just comes with them. But with this welcome screen, you just zip on over here, you click on install, it installs them, and you're good to go. And then, of course, desktop mode, you can pick whether you want the default, which is what we're on, or the tablet mode. And then using the desktop, click the Applications menu button at any time to open the applications. Window management down here in your little dock and then your system tray which is over here you click on that and this will pop up it'll show you your onboard keyboard clipboard night color control disks and devices lock key status and then kde connect if you're not familiar with that you can download the application onto your 
Apple or Google device. And that way you can sync right up with your computer and it gives you a lot of power with your phone and your computer. And then desktop search. You can start typing while on your desktop with no open windows or strike Alt F2 with your keyboard at any time. And then you can start doing a quick search. Applications, solve math equations, find bookmarks, or quickly open your browser tabs. And then of course the Farron OS store, which we will look at here in a moment. And then theme mode. You can change it from default, light, or dark. I like a dark theme, so I'm going to go ahead and pick the dark theme, and there it's switched. If you would like to, please choose the theme mode that suits you most. We've already done that, so we'll go to next. And then pair your Farron OS machine with your Android device, which we just discussed on the KDE Connect. And then reduce eye strain. You can configure night color control if you want to. And then enjoy. And then you close out of that. Your small tour is over. And then you've got an option of sending feedback or installing Farron OS, but we're just going to use it in a live mode on this virtual machine. First thing I'm going to do is come up here up top. You see that you got your clock up here and a little arrow. If you click on that, this is where your notifications would pop up. Now, if you don't want to be disturbed, you can click on Do Not Disturb. You can set it for one hour, four hours, until this evening, tomorrow morning, or you can manually disable it. That's truly up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then come down to the bottom, we've already looked at our system tray, internet connection, battery power, and of course your volume controls right here. If you come over to the middle right here, you have your default browser, which is Vivaldi. And I do recommend that if you haven't used Vivaldi lately, to download it and give it a test drive. Right here, you can import data from another browser if you would like. I'm not going to do that at the moment, so we're going to go ahead and close out of that and close out all these open windows and then open it back up because it was opened from a while ago when we were in the tour. And when you get your main start page right here, it uses Bing as a default search engine. Now, you can change this in settings to DuckDuckGo or Google or whatever you might want. Also, it comes out of the box with ad trackers and blockers. As you can see right here, it'll let you know how many trackers and how many ads have been blocked. And then you can come over here and get more information if you would like that. And then of course, right here, you've got different bookmarks of different sites that you could bookmark right here. Now, if you don't want them there, all you gotta do is hit the minus button and they do disappear. So they're not stuck on your screen. What I wanna do is come over here to the left. You've got your bookmarks, your history, your notes, and then Vivaldi.com and then Wikipedia. Now you can go down here to settings and open that up and you have a lot of different options here. Everything from general options to appearance, all the way down to display all. But like I said, if you haven't tried out Vivaldi or taken a look at it lately, if you do download Farron, I suggest you give Vivaldi a test run. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. We're going to come on down here, and we're going to open up our files. And as you can see right here, this is the KDE desktop. And a lot of people will notice that right off the bat, it does not come with Dolphin. It comes with files out of the box. Now, I prefer Dolphin in some of the things that I do, but Files is a great file manager. You've got your usual suspects over here. You've got your home folders right here, and I truly love the way it looks, whether it's in the light theme or the dark theme. It's just a great-looking file manager, and it stays out of your way. It lets you get your work done without any issues. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Next thing I want to do is go down here. I'm going to go ahead and open up Settings. And if you're used to KDE, you're used to the system settings. So right now, it's in a light theme. We're going to go ahead and make it dark across the operating system. And there you go. That is quick. That is changed. And right off the bat, you can change your wallpaper from here if you want to. If you want to, go ahead and click on Change Wallpaper. If you look over here, you get some KDE wallpapers. You get some Farron wallpapers. If you're used to KDE, you know they have a specific theme of wallpapers. But I do like the look that some of the Farron wallpapers have. I truly love the look of this whole operating system. And then you've got other things over here. You've got mouse actions, location, icons. If you wanted to change your icon setup, you can change it to rows, the alignments, the size. You really got a lot of different things you can change over here. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of that. And then down here, one click will open or one click selects them. I usually leave a double click so I can open because that's what I'm used to. If I leave it on a single click, I start having all kinds of things open. So this is really based on what your preference is and how you do your things and how you have a workflow going. Now we're going to go over here and click on appearance. And as you can see, it brings up a whole bunch of different ways you can change your system. I recommend that if you do download it, definitely go over, play around with it a little bit and see what you really like and how you truly want to set your system up. 
right here you can change your application style your plasma style and i'm not going to go in depth with this because a lot of you have seen me cover kde in the past as a matter of fact i will link a video at the end of this that you can go to if you want to know everything in all the settings that you can change right here i have an in-depth video it's about 30 minutes long that lets you know everything that you have control of in your kde desktop environment i'm going to go ahead and close out of this and then if you come back down over here to the application start menu you've got your favorites you've got all applications you've got graphics you've got krita and LibreOffice draw kde connect geary mail great mail client web browser manager now a lot of you would be saying i don't like vivaldi what if i want a different web browser well farin makes it real easy you can click right here uninstall vivaldi and then you can pick any of these browsers you want Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Firefox, Brave, Opera, LibreWolf, Falcon, Gnome Web. Whatever you might want, you can put on there quickly and be up and running. So just remember that. So we'll come back down here, go back up to Internet, down to Multimedia. You got VLC Media Player. You got the LibreOffice Suite settings. You've got your boot repair, Synaptic Package Manager. Let's go ahead and cover that real quick, and then we'll check out their store. Those of you who are familiar with my videos know that I truly love Synaptic Package Manager for one reason and one reason only. You can go up here and do a search. Let's say we were looking for something like OBS Studio. Let's go ahead and reach out there and do that search. There's OBS Studio. You check mark it, mark it for installation. It'll let you know what dependencies are required. You mark those dependencies and then you can come up and click apply and install it. Let's say you wanted to install something else as well. So let's go to Caden Live. Let's do a search for that. There's Caden Live. Let's go ahead and mark that for installation. Come down here and mark all the dependencies for installation. And now you can come up here and look that you've got OBS marked, Caden Live. Then you can apply and both of them would be installed at the same time. I love Synaptic Package Manager. It's still one of my most favorite package managers out there. It truly makes it easy and quick to install software. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. What we're gonna do is come back down here, go back to settings and go to store and this is the fair in store i love the way it looks i do believe it definitely looks way better than linux mints or ubuntu's i would say the only store that probably beats it in looks is the pop shop on pop os but you can come over here you've got your editors picks right here you've got blender thunderbird virtual box let's say you were wanting something on accessories just click on accessories and you can come through here and find pretty much anything you want or you could even go up here and do a search. Let's say we wanted to do OBS Studio, type that in, and it brings it up right here, live streaming and video recording software. If you just click on it, you can scroll down, you've got reviews, got the package information, and it lets you know right here that OBS Studio is a flat pack. So you do have flat packs engaged out of the box. But that's a quick way to get software installed on Farin OS. Now, I want to close out because I do want to show you something else as well. Let's go back to settings. No, actually, I want to go down to system. And first thing I want to show you is the GW Package Manager. So let's say you go online, you download a Debian package, and you want to install it as opposed to using the Farin Shop or Synaptic Package Manager. Download it. Once it's downloaded, all you got to do is open it up, right-click it, open it with GW Package Manager, and this package installer will install it. So you've got three different ways to install software on Farin OS. I love it. Let's go back down here, go back up to system. I want to go to console real quick. And I want to see if they have HTOP installed. Let's go ahead and go with top. They don't have HTOP. Let's go ahead and maximize that so you can see it. Right now, I've got four gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine. At rest with just the console open, we're using about 900 megabytes. That's going to be a little high because we are in a virtual machine. But this is a little heavier than your Linux Mint Cinnamon or whatever you might be using. But at the same time, if you're wanting something that looks a little better, you do give up a little bit in resource usage, but not a lot. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Come back down here, back up to system. You've got your info center. Let's go ahead and click on that. That lets you know this is KDE Plasma 5.2, 4.4. QT versions 5.15.3 and kernel version is 5.13.0-40 generic and this is Farin OS, the April 2022 release. Let's go ahead and close out of that, come back down here, back into system, you got your login window, system feedback, send feedback, 
store we've already looked at and then you got utilities you got your calculator files and spectacle which is your screenshot tool you also do have the latte dock installed so you can adjust that and play around with that and pretty much make Farron look any way that you want it to that my friends was a quick look at Farron OS I truly believe it's one of the best looking Linux distributions out there and I also believe that if you're somebody that's using Linux Mint or you're using Ubuntu and you're tired of the look and feel of it, that Farron OS is definitely a place for you to check out. Zip on over, download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, just take it for a test drive. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Don't forget to zip on over and take a look at the Ebo Central store. Like I said, if there's something you like on there, pick it up. Do me a favor before you leave today, please like, subscribe, or follow my channel doesn't cost anything and if you end up not liking me you can always unsubscribe also i want to send a thank you to miss loft mitchell matthew cato mike R. eugene and the nitrix development team for the support of my channel and if you would like to support the channel you can become a member buy us a cup of coffee maybe go to paypal and send us a donation or zip on over to patreon and become a patron to the channel those links will be in the description below thank you for watching my video and i will see you in the next video